Okay, I started the recording, so let's continue. Yeah, so basically, as I was saying, right, while we were developing our own, uh, uh, developing chain code for, for our own platform, right, it was really getting difficult for us to basically uh, debug chain code in real time and truly do an iterative kind of uh, development uh, in for Hyperledger Fabric, right? And that's where, that's where uh, we, started looking at what are the different options for actually debugging chain code, right? So what I'm going to cover today is basically some of our experiences while doing that. Um, so the different approaches for debugging chain code that already exist. Uh, so I'll cover some of that. And then I'll also cover a particular, uh, you know, extension for VS code that we have developed as part of Spydra. It's made, we have made it open source, so, you know, you can use it uh, and as contributed as well, but we'll look at, you know, the Hyperledger Fabric debug uh, VS Code extension and see, you know, how that can easily make that process a bit more easy to debug uh, chain code right with from within uh, within Visual Studio Code as such. So basically, you know, first of all, what are the challenges while developing uh, chain code for Hyperledger Fabric, right? First of all, you know, the chain code literally runs within within the fabric environment right so the first thing that you need to have is a fabric environment itself which means you know you need to deploy the peers orders and uh, you know basically set up the entire uh, hyperledger fabric network right of course you have you know default out of the box uh, uh, test network and scripts available to do that but that still uh, becomes a prerequisite first of all then the second and more you know painful process really is the updating of a chain code, right? So when you're developing uh, something, you will obviously update and then you have to test it. And that is not a very simple process as such, right? You have to install, you have to approve the chain code, you have to install the chain code on all the peers uh, that are in the network. Then you have to approve the chain code uh, and the approval has to be done by each organization, which is part of the network. And then the chain code has to be committed on the network and then only, you know, it'll run basically, right? So every time you update the chain code, you'll have to go through this entire chain code life cycle as such to, to do that. Um, and then the third thing is, you know, even if you do this, right, uh, unlike traditional other languages and frameworks, right, where you can literally run the chain code within an IDE, and put a breakpoint and then you know do line by line debugging uh, that is still not possible really out of the box right that's uh, that requires there are some approaches to do that which i'll talk about but uh, you know those are the things which typically is a challenge for uh, uh, for uh, hyperledger fabric developers and typically what happens because of that right is that people don't really do debugging uh, within an ide as such Mostly what people start out with and what we also started out with is, you know, just logging messages or console messages and logging messages and files and things like that. And then you deploy the chain code and then, you know, you basically see what the output is and then you make some changes, again, deploy the chain code, then again, you know, see what the messages are, where the flow is, you know, what the what the flow of the code is, what what uh, which code is being executed, what is the output of that, all of that, you log in messages and then you try to, figure your way around, right? Uh, that is very cumbersome, of, of course, right? And that's what we also started to do initially, but then, you know, that was really not helping us a lot and it was taking a lot of the developer's time over a period of time, right? So that's where we started looking at different ways of actually debugging chain code, right? And Hyperledger Fabric does support a couple of different ways. Um, so there is the Hyperledger Fabric dev mode, uh, which I'll talk about. Uh, and then, you know, uh, starting the, with the newer versions of 2.x um, uh, Hyperledger co Fabric uh, versions, right? There is this new concept of uh, deploying chain code as a service. Now, chain code as a service model, although is used for a completely different purpose, uh, or it has been built for a completely different purpose, but it can actually be used to uh, solve this challenge of uh, of uh, uh, debugging chain code as well, which I'll, which I'll also get into. But even these approaches, right, require you to basically set up your own fabric network and then do some configurations first, right, to make all of that uh, possible. So let, let's look at these approaches first, right? And I'll, I'll cover the chain code as a service debugging method first, because that's the more 
uh, recent and you know that's where uh, that's the recommended model of deployment also going forward for chain code right so let's let's take a look at how that can actually be used to uh, debug chain code while you're writing it. so essentially a quick background on uh, the chain code as a service model itself first fundamentally the chain code as a service model has been dis designed so that you know um, you have more control on how the chain code itself is built deployed and run so traditionally right when you when you create a chain code you will you basically have to um, you know upload it or install it on the peer and then ask the peer to basically run it so the entire uh, entire uh, work of building the chain code from the source code um, deploying it in a you know in a container where it runs and actually running it was maintained was done by the uh, by the peer node as such right um, of course you know that means that you can only you know run chain code with uh, which is supported by the with you know the framework versions which is supported by the peer and you know you literally didn't have much control on how it is built how it is deployed and all that right that's where uh, starting with the uh, 2.x versions of hypergy fabric there has been a different model where you have more control on how the chain code is built first of all which is the concept of exter external builder and then you, there is also the concept of where you can you know run the chain code by yourself so you can you can run the chain code in your own container essentially and then instruct the peer node to connect your chain code in order to run it right so you you are literally responsible for building hosting the chain code and running it and then you instruct the peer to connect to it and um, submit the request to the chain code con container or server that you are running right essentially so if i look at the code right let me just uh, show you some code of how that actually works um so if i so this is the basically the chain code external sample uh, from the fabric samples itself so if i if you if you go to the fabric samples right there is the asset transfer basic uh, sample that has different uh, that is a bit extensive and it has different uh, versions of it in different languages and uh, different ways of running it right so this is the chain code external sample that i'm actually showing you and if you look at the code for that right uh, the way this uh, this works is that at the bottom there is a the main method and uh, a new chain code is instantiated with the smart contract that has been written and then this chain code instance is passed to a, a chain code server right and the chain code server is then started so literally we are we are starting a chain code server and running it ourselves right and while starting the chain code server uh, there are few parameters that are given one is the chain code id which i'll come to what it is and then there is an address so this is the address where our chain code server is literally running and there are some samples if you look at the environment variable sample provided here um, it's just a you know host and a port right so it could be something like this where the chain code is actually running and on this particular port right so that's what we are literally running the server on a particular address and then uh, that's the first step right and then the second step is typically you know when you deploy the chain code right you will de deploy the actual chain code on the peer but in the chain code as a service model you don't deploy the actual chain code you deploy certain files right one is a metadata file uh, which basically tells you certain information like what is the type so uh, there is a so i was uh, telling that chain code as a service basically is all about running the chain code outside right but before that you have to build the chain code so there is a concept of an external builder um, and that is an extensive topic in itself but without going into that in too much detail there is a you know inbuilt or default external builder for chain code as a service right so you are basically telling that this this the type of the chain code is a chain code as a service and this is just a, a label or a name for the chain code literally so this the metadata.json doesn't contain much except for telling that this type this chain code is of type 
chain code as a service, right? And then the con connection information basically tells the instructs the peer that it should connect to this particular address and this particular port to actually submit the request to uh, to run the chain code. Yeah. So that's how these two are uh, linked. And then it's the connection.json file and the metadata.json file, which is actually deployed on the peer instead of the chain code uh, to, to support this entire model. So we'll look into that. But that's the overall high level, uh, high level concept. So how do I use this now, right, to my advantage to actually debug chain code, right? So the way to do that is, uh, let's say, you know, if you, if you look at the code here, right, uh, this is a Go, Golang chain code, right? So what if I simply try to run this within Visual Studio Code, right? And the way to do that normally in Visual Studio Code is that you go to the run and debug section and basically create a launch file first of all, right? And when I create a launch file, it will basically detect that, okay, this is a Golang uh, uh, language and uh, it will give you some options. So launch a package, right? This is what we want to do. So it will give you some configuration like this, right? Let me save that. And then I can actually click this to debug. But if you do this plainly like this, right? Uh, okay, I need to select the Golang file first, where the main method is. This is the file with the uh, main method. And then I can go and start debugging, right? But if I do that, um, once it starts, it will actually throw an exception. Or it should, it's still trying to start. Um, that's because, you know, Okay, so when the exception, yeah, it's through an exception and it's basically saying the CCID must be specified. So it's coming from our code only because, you know, as we saw in our code, uh, there's a chain code ID and address where it starts and we haven't configured those, those environment variables yet, right? So what I'm going to do now is that, you know, because we know that we, Visual Studio can actually run this code now, what I'll do is I'll configure the chain code address to be localhost, right? So simply what we'll do is this should be uh, this address, right? The connection, okay, so not this address. So basically uh, we will configure and I'll come to that how to do that, but we'll, we'll ask the, uh, the first step is to ask the Visual Studio code to um, launch the chain code at localhost uh, 9999, right? So that the, and I will also provide a chain code ID which we'll get. Right, so those two we have to provide somehow and we'll run the chain code in localhost. Then what we'll do is we will instruct the peer node to connect to the chain code that is running on localhost. Now the peer node, right, what we'll do before that is that we have to deploy the peer node. So for that, I already, you know, deployed that uh, in the interest of time, uh, okay, no, I haven't. So let me just uh, start that first. So that is the typical uh, network network slash SSH. Um, let me copy that command. So I'll just uh, so this is the you know test test network that comes in the fabric samples, and uh, I'll just say uh, start the network with uh, start the network with. Uh, oops. Twice. Let me okay. okay, so I'll just say start the network uh, with the channel that is all with by creating a channel, my channel, right? And when I um, do that, it will this is a fabric network that it will bring with two organizations, right? Org one and org two. So it will do that all of that behind the scenes. Now what we have to do is we have to basically um, deploy the connection.json and uh, uh, metadata.json right um, into this network and then instruct um, the chain peer node to connect to my chain code right so for that what i'll do is instead of this address right what we will do is we'll ask the node to connect to the 
local host 9999 but remember that the peer node is running inside a docker container so for docker container for a for a uh, container running inside docker to access my local host you have to uh, use a different way of doing it you can either use the ip address of the bridge or there's an internal you know uh, dns which is host dot docker dot internal which you can use which basically instructs the any container that you have to go to the local host on the host where the docker can, docker is running right so this is what we are doing by doing this right so the my chain connection.json looks like this and the metadata.json is pretty simple nothing no changes there right so i've already so uh, and how do i deploy this uh, so you have to basically create a zip file with the connection.json Right, it's simply zipping it into code.r.gz, uh, and then you know you take this uh, as well as the metadata.json and then zip it again. Right, so these things I've already done, and um, if I look at the uh, sample folder, um, I already have that uh, zipped file here. Right, so once you have the zip file, what you have to do is you have to simply install that zip file in onto the network that we just created so the above portions here these are just setting some you know environment variables which you would normally do you know even when you want to run any command using the peer cli onto the uh, onto the test network that i've just deployed right uh, so I'm using the org one. So this is a test network that has two organizations, right? So I'm using org one. And uh, what I'll do is install that zip file with those two JSON files, the connection JSON and uh, and the metadata JSON uh, as the chain code. So I'm actually not installing the real chain code or anything, just those uh, that zip file, right? And that is successful. And then what you get out of this is the package identifier. So this is the chain code, the, the CCID that we are talking about, right? So let me just copy this um, and use it here. So once we have that, right, then what we need to do is to basically, I'm just setting it as an environment variable. And then the next step is to approve the chain code. So this is nothing different, uh, regular chain code approval. As you can see, it's, uh, it's nothing different. Uh, we are using the name as debug CC for the chain code. And we are providing the package ID that we got earlier. And the rest is you know, providing the alter information, the DLS information, channel information, and so on and so forth. Right. So let me just uh, do that. Approve on behalf of org1, uh, which is basically successful. And then let me approve on behalf of org2. And once the chain code is approved, uh, you basically commit the chain code, which is again nothing different. Normally, how you do that by providing the uh, the chain code name, the peer addresses, the uh, order addresses, the TLS configuration, all of that. So this is you know how you would normally do that. Nothing different. And uh, once that is done, you'll see that you know the chain code is now committed to the channel, right? The channel that we have deployed. So what we have really done is we have uh, committed the, uh, we have deployed the chain code as a service way of doing it and said that, okay, the peer should now connect to local host on my host to submit the chain code requests, right? Now, let's come back to my uh, uh, Visual Studio, right? So as I was saying now, we have to run the, uh, Visual Studio uh, chain chain code within Visual Studio and basically provide these two pieces of information, right? So that is where we have to add those as environment variables here, right? So what I'll do is I'll add the these environment variables in the launch.json debug configuration. So what I've said is that uh, the chain code server address is localhost 9999 where we want to run it. And the chain code ID is what we got from uh, the package ID when we when we executed uh, the install 
command, right? So this is a package identifier. It's the same that we have configured here. So that's pretty much it, right? Uh, now we have instructed the uh, Visual Studio to launch the chain code and uh, connect here, right? And uh, run it. Now let's see what uh, what happens if we run the chain code again. Okay, I have to select the Golang file first and run. So now it will run and uh, it shouldn't give any exception, right? Uh, so it's still trying, but uh, it'll, yeah, it's, it's, it started running, right? But nothing has happened till now because it has just started running. So the chain code server has started, right? So now the next step typically, right, to invoke a chain code, uh, invoke a chain code uh, is to basically, um, uh, is to basically invoke a chain code method, right? And uh, the way to do that, uh, normally people, how you they do that is using the uh, Fabric CLI again. So let me go back here and let's try to invoke a method, right? So uh, this chain code has an initialize init ledger method and I'm just invoking it from the peer CLI, yeah. So let me try that. Okay, before that, what I'll do is now, you know, supposedly the debugging should work. So let me locate the init chain code, initialize. Uh, it's at the top, init ledger method. And I've already put a breakpoint, but you can put a breakpoint break anywhere you want, right? So let me just invoke it. And now you can see that something is already blinking here. And uh, can see that the breakpoint has hit. So now literally the chain code is running in Visual Studio code. And when I submit a request to the peer, the peer calls our chain code and with it, which is running with the Visual Studio and then the breakpoint gets hit, right? So now you can actually ins inspect, you know, everything that's, uh, so if I, if you can do line by line debugging, you can inspect the variables, right? What's happening, what are the values? You can look at the context, uh, you can, you know, do F10, F11, uh, step into, step over, all of that you can continue, right? And I just pressed F5 so that it continues. And then you can see that the chain code invoke is successful and you get the result. So this is one way of doing it, right? So the chain code as a chain code as a service, external, external service model, you can actually use to your advantage to start debugging now, right? Once you do all this configuration, right? Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's one way of doing it. Oops. Yes. Yeah. So so this is this is this this is literally what we did, right? So irrespective of what uh, language it is, it's GoLang or Node.js or Java. As long as you configure Visual Studio to debug the language corresponding language first, then you can do these additional steps of con configuring the connection.json and metadata.json properly, and then start debugging it, right? So, um, so this is, you know, what, what we went through. There is a, another way of doing this also, which is using the fabric dev mode. So I'll not, um, you know, give you a demo of this because this is a little bit more complicated to set up. Uh, the first thing, you know, because there are certain different requirements for this. First of all, you know, there is no uh, test network kind of out of the box script per se, which will set set this up for you. So you'll have to, you know, download the uh, peer, uh, download or build the peer binaries, and then you know, run the orderer peer CLI binaries yourself, and then do the configuration for this to work. But the way this works is that, you know, so this will work with, um, so the earlier model that I was showing you, right, the chain code as an external service, that will work with only code, which is written for the newer external service model. This will work with anything, right, literally, because this here, you will basically, you're basically configuring peer to run in what is called as a dev mode. And there is some documentation, you know, in the Hyperledger Fabric um, documentation site, which tells you how to do that. But basically what, in order for this to work, right, um, or what this does basically is it runs peer in such a way that when you update the chain code, right, you don't have to redeploy it. So the, uh, the 
sorry you don't have to re approve it and commit it again so the the steps of um, committing the chain code and uh, approving the chain code by each organization and uh, committing the chain code need not happen every time you can change the chain code uh, upload it again and it will run the new chain code without these additional steps to be done so that is what fundamentally it does right at a, at a very high level but for it to work right first of all you have to use solo as the consensus uh, solo as we all know is sort of deprecated at this time but it still works right so for this particular uh, reason of debugging you can still use it because it's not really production port or production uh, deployment that you're doing here right so you, you'll have to use solo so you know you'll have to uh, create the genesis block by running config tx gen uh, with solo as the uh, profile right and then while uh, uh, while starting the orderer node right you have to use the solo uh, profile and the the samples for that is given in this particular location right and then what then what you'll have to do is when you start the peer node right you'll have to start it in with an additional switch uh, saying peer chain code dev is equal to true so what happens by doing that and then you you'll have to install the chain code that you have written and then approve and chain code one time right so this this task you have to do one time uh, so what happens by doing this right is that as i was saying two things right one is you don't have to do the approve and commit chain code uh, again uh, the second time you up, up, update the chain code second time and also that in this model also instead of the um, chain code being run by the peer you can actually run the chain code outside right um, which is what it does and the way you do that is when you run uh, similar to what we saw in the chain code as a service model you can actually run the chain code within visual studio code and while you are starting the chain code right you basically configure some other environment variables like the name uh, tls has to be disabled because you know solo doesn't work uh, with uh, well with uh, tls and uh, for that matter we have to disable tls um, and then uh, what we say what we do is that when we start the chain code we have to pass the peers address to which the chain code should connect so it's, here is the reverse right in the earlier chain code as a service model we were inspect in instructing the peer to connect to the chain code to submit requests but here we are doing the reverse when when we are starting the chain code within visual studio code we are telling the chain code to connect to the peer at this particular location and then establish a connection to the peer so that when the peer tries to run a chain code instead of the peer running by itself it knows where to send the request to which is chain code which is running within our visual studio code environment right so uh it's a similar model but works slightly different and you know the the docs link that i pointed to has some details on how to set it up um the slight complication with this method is that you know first of all you have to do more work to actually set up the network and then the second thing is you know depending upon the language right the way you configure the chain code in visual studio like in go for go you do this but for uh, node.js um you have to slightly give the arguments in a different way so the program the way that you launch the uh, in go right you have to launch uh, you can directly launch the go file while in node.js you have to launch uh, a no module basically and then give your file as a argument to that and you have to give some additional arguments so the there are slightly different things to be done and uh, but still you know the, this is another way of uh, debugging the chain code within visual studio code or any id for that matter where you run the chain code right so those are you know two uh, methods that exist sort of out of the box within hyperledger fabric itself which you can use to your advantage uh, but of course as we saw right you still need to deploy the network first that's one thing and then you have to understand these additional configurations that you have to do you have to do it in the right way um, and then only things will work right so that's where you know then we thought why not automate 
all this that we have already talked about, right? And can we do something much simpler, right? And that's where we, as Spider, created the Hyperledger Fabric Debugger Extension, which I'll uh, which I'll talk about uh, going forward. So basically, let me um, dive into the actual extension itself, which will give you a better idea. So let's take the same uh, chain code, right? Which is the chain code external, yeah? And uh, I'll open a different, uh, open it into a different uh, window, one second. Yeah, so this is the same um, same chain code, but I've uh, named it differently, right? And it's opened in a different window. As you can see, there's nothing in the launch.json or anything, right? So this is a fresh uh, fresh sample that I've just opened. Think of it that way, right? Now, what you can do is that um, uh, there is an extension called Hyperledger Fabric Debugger, right? You can basically search it within Visual Studio uh, marketplace and it will come up like this hyperledger fabric debugger and once you install it right uh, it will come up uh, in the left pane now if you go here there's nothing there right now but uh, because we have not done anything right so let's say you, you want to debug the uh, golang chain code here right and this is the same chain code as i was saying which is written for a chain code as an external service yeah so in this particular case um, I see there are some questions. I'll take the questions in the chat, you know, towards the end of the presentation. But let me just cover the uh, the demo yes, first. There is a question. I think first, I think maybe yeah. this port uh, double and double and port number is hard coded or what? Uh, sorry, which question? What was the question? So there's a question from Ravi. He mentioned is chain code port number double nine double nine is hard coded port or can we customize it? Yeah, you can customize it. You can put whatever port you want. It's just a port where you know the chain code will be launched. So whatever you configure. So let me go back to that uh, example. So whatever you configure here, right? The same you have to put here, right? So these should match. So this is where you're saying where the chain code should be launched. And this is the section where we are saying, you know, instructing the peer where it should connect. So these should match. That's all. It's not hard coded. You can you can put whatever port you want. I think other he mentioned the what are the types we have. I didn't get what is the question. Maybe Ravi can ask. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so if you look at this metadata JSON, uh, you have a types defined, right? C C A S. So is it what are the types that we have? Yeah, so this is the only built in type, literally, but uh, basically this type you can use to so there is this concept of external builder in uh, in fabric right where you can say that you can customize the way the fabric peer will build your code. So you can define your own type and then you can define a builder for that. So if you look at here right, there is a sample builder that is given here. Um, so this builder is what will basically use this type at the end of the day. So if you want to create your own builder, right, you can define your own type and then use a custom builder for that. Um, so you can look at the how the external builder works um, in, in Fabric and that will give you a much better understanding of how, uh, how, how that looks. Yeah, so here if you see. Yeah. So we have to hard code this in the sample builder or the type that we are going to define. Whatever, yeah, whatever you defined here, you have to use that in the builder essentially. Okay. But this is a built-in type essentially that Fabric itself understands. Yeah. Okay. So let me uh, switch back to the other chain code, right? Uh, so this is the same external chain code, but a fresh one, right? Where, where we have not done anything, but we have just installed the Hyperledger Fabric uh, debugger extension yeah so uh, the process is similar if i have to debug i have to first of all create a launch.json file right so i'll create a launch.json file but you you see that there's an add configuration option here right which anyway comes so if you go to add configuration right and scroll down to the go section 
you'll see that there is a option to debug fabric chain code. So this is this doesn't come automatically. This is coming here because I've installed the extension. So this extension is contributing this additional option here. So if you select this right, what it has done is it has created another configuration section here, right? So there, now you can see there are two configuration sections. One is the default one, which uh, which Visual Studio Code creates, which is the just saying I can debug uh, go go chain code. And now there is another configuration section that is created here. So the first one is called launch package and the second one that has been created is debug chain code. And if you see here, right in the debug section, there's a drop down where, uh, okay, let me save it, it's not saved. Yeah, now if you go to the drop down, you'll see those two options here, right? So I'll delete the other one, which is a default uh, go one because it wouldn't work out of the box anyway. And now you'll see that there's only one option here, right? And uh, if you see the configuration options here, one is just the name, the other is the type. So the the extension basically supports Golang and uh, uh, Node. So HLF Go is for Golang. So this is Golang. And uh, if you change it to Node, and I'll show that, come to that later, it's the it will support Node. And then there is another flag, which is this is a chain code as a service. So we are talking about, you know, there are two ways of de developing chain code, right? So chain code as a service way or the older way. Because this is a chain code as a service kind of a code, I'll switch this to true, right? To instruct the debugger that the code has been developed to work with chain code as a service model, right? And that's pretty much it, right? You don't have to, so what I'll do is I'll also just to be sure, what I'll do is I'll remove the network that we created, right? So uh, I will, okay, so, right. I will do dot slash network down. So I'll bring down the network, right? The earlier one that we have created. So we don't have that network anymore. And all that we have done is uh, open the chain code and created this configuration file, right? And that's it. Now, if I click on debug, now you see that some things are happening here. Uh, it says starting local fabric network, and there is some things happening, right? So it's actually creating a peer node, it's actually creating, uh, so if I look through the through the messages here, uh, everything that was done to uh, create a network, right, is being done automatically by the chain code. Okay, I got an error because, you know, as again, uh, I have to select a go file before I click the debug, which I always forget. Let me do that again. Um, and if I look at the output here, right, is as you can see, it's creating a CA container, a CLI container, orderer, peer. So everything that happens when you create a network is automatically happening here. So the chain code, the, the extension actually does all of that for you, right? And then it deploys, uh, creates the channel. If I look through all of that, uh, it, it's creating a channel and then it's deploying the chain code. Uh, into that channel and uh, you know everything that we discussed about how to manually configure the chain code as a service model is being done automatically by the plug plugin literally that's what is happening so now the debugging is actually started but as we were seeing earlier in order to actually submit a request we use the peer cli earlier right but that defeats the purpose right if now again i have to go somewhere else uh, basically use the peer cli and submit a request right so that's where the second thing that the plugin does is um, it provides a way to submit the request right from within Visual Studio Code. And the way to do that is by creating a file with a dot fabric extension. You can name it anything, right? Like I have named, we already created a file called test.fabric here, uh, but the name doesn't matter. And you can actually create as many files as you want, right? So, uh, and how does the file look? It's a JSON file, basically. It's a JSON file, which, you know, which is an array, and there are individual uh, objects that you can create within it. And the structure of this is, first of all, you say whether you want to invoke or query. So just like, you know, when you're invoking through the peer CLI, you say whether you want to invoke or query, you say, you basically say that first, and then which method, right? So init ledger is a method which doesn't take any arguments. So all that you have to say is invoke init ledger. And you'll see that the moment you type invoke, right? So let me type something new here, create a new section. 
I type invoke or uh, query, you'll see a send request link appearing above, right? So like here, it's appearing here. So you click that and you can see that, you know, the result will be on the right. So the invocation is successful. Similarly, I have uh, created a query, uh, query request and get all assets, send request. And, you know, it'll basically send, call this method and give you the results. So literally, you know, you can uh, invoke the chain code right from within Visual Studio. And uh, of course you can put a breakpoint like here. Let me put a breakpoint at the top. So let, let me put it in get uh, read read asset here. Yeah. And I go to the dot fabric file and uh, let me create a new section for that because I don't have one. So I'll say read asset is what I want to do and arguments because this expects some arguments and what does it expect it expects the context and an id right so id is a string so let's say uh, let's see so asset one is one of the asset that has been inserted via the init ledger so i say read asset one and send request uh, asset A does not exist. Okay. Something went wrong in the chain code, I guess, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's coming from within the chain code only. So let's see what is happening. Okay. Let's see if I can put a. I think it's coming from even below, uh, above here. So let me put a breakpoint here. And if I click on send request, sorry, send request here, uh, you'll see that the breakpoint is hit. And then you can do F10. And uh, as you can see, it cannot read for whatever reason. But basically, the request is coming in. And you can see that uh, you know the when it's actually reading the uh, the asset doesn't exist and so for some reason a is coming instead of this which is weird uh, but basically you know this this is uh, this is uh, how you will uh, you can basically uh, debug right um, so what whatever method you put right like for example uh, in the create asset right you can we are calling the create asset so i can put a breakpoint within uh, within create asset here. Uh, so let me go back here and uh, put a breakpoint here. And if I send request, uh, the breakpoint is hit. And then you can see that the ID that was sent, which is A1, is what is coming here, right? So, uh, and then you can, you know, uh, debug as you normally would do. Yeah. So that's that's the that's the quick and easy way of doing it. Um, as I was saying, you know, uh, this works with uh, Golang as well as uh, Node.js chain code. So let me just quickly switch, switch to a different uh, chain code, which is the Node.js chain code. And this is again um, of coming from fabric samples only. And uh, this is the chain code that I'm using here is the asset ledger, uh, asset transfer ledger queries, because this has some more advanced features around querying. So let's quickly look at that. So there's a uh, chain code that I've just opened in Visual Studio Code. And uh, as usual, I go to the debug section, create a launch file, create a Node.js Node launch file this time. And as earlier, um, basically, um, yeah, once, once you create a launch file, you can save it and then um, as earlier, right, this time what I'll do is I will take this configuration and replace this with that. And uh, instead of go, I'll say node. This is a node based chain code, and this is not a uh, chain code as a service. So I'll switch this to false. And yeah, that's pretty much it, right? And then I go back to the uh, JS file and start debugging.
And as you can see, it's doing a similar thing. It's creating the network, um, launching the chain code um, and all of that. And once it's ready, it starts printing the message that it's ready. Uh, again, I can create a .fabric file, uh, but with uh, the methods that exist in this one, right? So similarly, there's an init ledger method in the Node.js chain code that gets initiated. Uh, you can put a breakpoint. Let's do that in read asset here. Let me open it here. So this is a read asset and uh, uh, let me put a breakpoint here. And uh, so when I click that, it comes here and as usual, right, I can basically inspect the uh, the variables, The I can inspect uh, the ID here, for example, I can step through, step over all of that, right? Now, there are some additional uh, features that this supports, uh, the, the plugin supports, like, for example, if I go to the .fabric file, right, um, normally when you submit an argument, right, Everything, even if you do it using the peer CLI, everything is a string. So for example, in this case, right, uh, there is a uh, CouchDB query that you can submit to query assets, but then you'll have to stringify it first like this and then submit normally, right? If you look at the, uh, the sample here, that's how they do it, right? Uh, this is where the CouchDB query uh, option, uh, way of doing it is mentioned and you know, you'll have to stringify and then submit it, right? Like this will work, but uh, this is a bit difficult, right? And especially if your JSON is huge. So that's where we also, the plugin also supports instead of stringifying it and support and, and submitting it, you can basically submit it as a JSON itself, right? So this, this will work and this will also work, right? So when you do that, uh, it's actually changing, but uh, let, me, let me show you by calling something else first. I just uh, call read asset and then if I, do this, as you can see, the result is coming. Uh, so you can actually directly write a, have a JSON here instead of stringifying it and then, then submitting it. Um, if you go to the extension here, there are some additional things that you see here. First of all, you, uh, this basically creates a network behind the scenes. So if I go to my Docker container now, right? There is a network that it has created with a CA, uh, peer, orderer, CLI, and all of that, right? And CouchDB. Uh, you can actually manage the network. So if you're, you know, if you're done with your debugging, when you quit Visual Studio Code, it will actually stop the network by itself, but it won't remove the network. So if you want to, but manually stop, start, or remove, right? If you want to reset the network, so uh, the way this will work is that when you, when you uh, uh, quit Visual Studio Code, it will stop the network. Next time when you debug, the same network will be reused. So any as any anything that you have submitted, right? Any transactions you have made, everything will be there in the ledger as such. So you you know there will be continuity. But let's say you want to start from scratch, right? So you can remove the network and then uh, then when you debug the next time, you'll get a fresh network altogether. So there are some you know options to manage the network that is created automatically by the plugin. And then the other thing that you can do is you you can use you know. Uh, different users. So if you have a case where you want to use different users and do some testing, right? By default, uh, the plugin will create two users for you, org one admin and user user one. Uh, org one admin has an admin role and user one has a client role within, within uh, Fabric. But you can actually create more users, right? Like I can say create uh, user 10, let's say. And uh, that will be created and in the uh, test.fabric right where you're invoking or query you can provide an identity uh, option with the user that you want to use right and now when you do this um, uh, and if you inspect the code here Here. Okay, 
somehow the breakpoint is not hitting me. One second. Let me just stop this and start again. Okay. So if you submit this with user 10, okay, something is gone wrong. Says cannot run the peer. Um, okay, I think maybe when I, did I click something here? Okay, I think uh, I'll probably have to reset the network, but I, uh, basically, you know, when you when when you use a different identity, it should, and if you inspect the context object, right, you should actually see the different identity uh, that that you basically set up, right? So uh, the plugin basically uh, supports multiple users to be created in a wallet and uh, things like that. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, pretty much uh, what I wanted to show you. So feel free to you know download the plugin and play around with it. Um, as I was saying, you know at Spydra we also provide uh, our mission is to you know make the adoption of blockchain easier. So we provide a platform that you can also try around. So you can go to spydra.app and if you go to get started right, you should be able to register yourself and try the platform out. You can create a hyperledger fabric network. Uh, within Spydra, and then um, you can try out the features. We provide a $400 credit that you can use uh, for free and uh, try out the platform. So feel free to do that. So thanks everyone. I'll uh, take any questions that you have. Yeah. Maybe just... you know, um, can I ask you? Uh, yeah. Hi, yeah. 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 Okay. I, I just have a question, but uh, somehow I understood that, but uh, still I want to confirm from your side. Uh, so when we do the debugging and executing some transactions uh, before launching it, uh, how that mm. the transactions will be there? I mean, how the transaction point of you? The, the question here is, uh, will there be a transaction that approval mechanisms, all those things will be there or just a simple, uh, when you launch the chain code, just executing the particular function, that's it. Nothing, nothing logged in the internet only. Um, so are you asking whether the transaction actually goes to the peer? Is that what you're asking? Or are you yes. asking about, yeah, it actually does go to the peer. Yeah. So, you know, if you, so basically the, you know, what the plugin does is it actually creates a real network behind the scene. It's a single org network, as you can see. So there's not no multiple organizations, not, but it actually creates a real network behind the scenes and the transactions are submitted to the peer. Uh, it's just that it's all managed behind the scenes for you. So you don't have to create your own network, but it's actually going to the Hyperledger fabric. It's executing the code that you have written and everything. So it's nothing different. Okay. okay. So that is internally maintained by the plugins. Correct. Yeah. It's uh, internally managed by the plugin. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Uh, can I ask? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. So I just wanted to check that you mentioned uh, in the fabric, we have the chain code as a service and as well as the fabric dev mode. So when you uh, do this uh, uh, debugging, so do you support both or is it uh, the chain code as a service is the only one that you are looking for? Uh, we support I might have. Yeah. yeah, we support both actually. And in fact, you know, in the samples that I was showing you, right, the JavaScript one is actually written with the older way of doing it. So it's not chain code as a service. So there is a, in the configuration for the debugger, right? There is a particular uh, key, uh, whether it's a chain code as a service or not. So if you set it to false, it's the older method. And uh, if you set it to true, uh, which is the other one here, uh, then the, the plugin works accordingly and uh, does the job for you. So we support both, yeah. Okay, thank you. I have another question. Uh, how this uh, private data collections or the approval mechanism, if I mentioned in the chain code, like uh, if if the for example, if I put the if conditions in the chain code saying that only from this organization comes in, you allow to execute the chain code. In that case, how that can be handled in the by the plugin? Yeah. So the plugin uh, plugins the reason.
basically to just debug your code right literally so if you look at the the network that it creates it's a single org network and uh, which means you know there's only one peer to endorse mm. right so there is mm. no there are no multiple peers we are not talking about endorsement policies or um so private private uh, data collection will work but endorsement there is no endorsement policy concept as such in the in the network that the plugin deploys and uh, the reason for that is it's you know it's uh, it's not really to test any of that right it's not even connecting to any existing network that you have it's deploying its own, right. right so the yeah. only only intention is just to debug the code that you have written right which is what it is really trying to solve yeah i agreed uh, but i i mean i have other thoughts here what mm. if i launch the network and can i do the debug with that particular network uh, not using the plugin, but yes, uh, using the manual, the way that I talked about, right, um, uh, where, you know, you can basically do the right configurations, either as a dev mode or chain code as an external service in your existing network, they, then you then it can do, yes, but not using the plugin, but yes, in the roadmap, we want to extend the plugin so that the debug works with any existing network that you have. We also want to provide an option to create multiple organizations and endorse configure things like endorsement policies and all uh, going forward but right now it just creates a single single uh, or network as such. thank you thank you yeah got it thank you yeah. hi yeah. one more uh, question yeah. yeah please go ahead is there any doc to test this out for the like the step by step procedure yes yes so if you go to the uh, plugin <laughs> itself right uh, the extension plugin itself uh, so you can actually see the documentation right here and there are links to the other to the github repo also and things like that so if you see here right there's a quick start and you can view this in the marketplace also so there's a quick start how to do that all the instructions are here right here yeah adam thank you yeah, yeah just i have one more question as uh, so this this debugger support uh, both the fabric scheme as well as the contract API, uh, both the types of uh, chain code writings. Yeah, yeah, it does actually. Yes, correct, it does. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. So thank you. Uh, if any other question you can ask, otherwise we can wrap up. And uh, so you can share the this. Uh, uh, VS code extension here, I think someone asking in the chat. Oh, okay, sure, sure. Yeah, let me just uh, share that right away. Yeah, and this uh, recording will be available on Hyperledger YouTube channel. So, and that will be also shared on the Hyperledger India chapter LinkedIn page. So, you can follow Hyperledger India. Okay, how do I get to the trying to get to the chat window <laughs> yeah got it so uh Ashwat, can you give can you make me co-host i need to stop the recording you are the co-host now oh, okay uh, let me yeah let's stop the recording <laughs>